Hey there! In this tutorial, we will create the spawner scene. This scene will instance and randomly place obstacles so that the game looks different every time we spawn an obstacle. Let's jump in and get started. Okay, we're here where we left off. First of all, I'm gonna get rid of this print statement. We don't need it anymore. And let's create a new scene. This is gonna be a node 2D and we'll call this one obstacle spawner. Let's save it under environment. This isn't gonna have too many nodes, it's only gonna have a timer. And we'll set this timer to a second and a half. And this timer is gonna define how long is it gonna pass in between each obstacle. So in this case, a new obstacle will be instance every a second and a half. And we'll set this to auto start for now. It's not gonna be like that uh, in the actual game, in our final product, but uh, right now it's easier for us to test things if, it's, if it starts automatically. Let's add a script. This is gonna be an empty string, create. Let's take, get a reference to our timer so that it's easier to reference to it. And let's also preload our obstacle scene that we made in the last lecture. I'm gonna connect the timeout signal of the timer to this script and inside here let's first define a method called spawn obstacle and let's call this method from the timer's timeout signal inside this method we want to instance a new obstacle instance and we want to add it as a child and we also want to randomize its position so that we don't get the same pipe location every time and to do this we want to change the y position of its position And we will use the random rand i method to get a random number. We're gonna use the modular operator and say 400 and plus 150. I'm gonna explain how this works and what it does in just a second. I'm actually doing. I'm actually gonna do it now. But first, let's go to up here and create a ready method which we'll use to call the randomize method. Okay, so the randomize method makes sure that we get different random numbers every time we run the game. If you don't call this randomize method before you call ran random i, you're always gonna get the same random numbers every time you play the game. So let me show you this by getting three random numbers before calling randomize. And the way random i works, you can actually go inside the documentation by holding the control key and clicking on the method and it will take you to the definition. And there's a handy little explanation here. As you can see, it says returns a random unsigned integer use remainder to obtain a random value in the interval. So, and here we have the, an example. So if you just say random i and call the method, it's gonna return a crazy integer, crazy large. We don't want that, we wanna limit this. And the way you do that is with the modulo or the remainder operator. So if you say rand i, remainder 20, it's gonna return a number between 0 and 19. So this number is 
not exclusive, inclusive, I don't know what's the word, <laughs> but yeah, this is how you use it. And in here, we're gonna use it to get, let's say four, a number between zero and three. And let's copy and paste this three times. If I run this by pressing F6 to run this scene, not the main scene, this scene, I'm gonna get one, two, and three. So if I run it again, it's gonna be the same. And if I run it again, it's gonna be the same. If I copy and paste it again one more time, it's gonna be one, two, three, zero, just, and if I run it again, like I said, it's gonna be the same because we're not randomizing. So it's always giving us the same random numbers. They're still random, but they're always the same, which makes sense, but also doesn't make sense at the same time. So let's see what happens if we call randomize before calling these randi method. Let's run it again. And as you can see, we get a different set of numbers every time we run, which is what we want. We don't want the game to look the same every time. Great, now that we understand what randomize does, let's come back to line 16 and try to understand what this statement is achieving. So you're, you're asking for a random number between zero and 399 and we're adding 150 to that. So we're basically getting a random number between 150 and 550. So let's, we can add a little comment here that says, get a random number between 150 and 550. And the reason we use 150 and 550 is this, if I show you this inside the world scene, you're gonna get it better instead of me just trying to explain it and do a poor job. <laughs> so let's go back to the world scene. And in here, let's instance an obstacle. So by default, it will be on 427 on the Y. So let's move this to the right a bit and let's start changing its Y position. So let's, we said 150 and 550, right? So first let's try 150. And as you can see, this will be the maximum amount that our pipes can be, can go up. So if you go more, first of all, you start seeing the background here and that's not good. And at the same time, if you make this too, if you move this too up, it's gonna make the game that much more difficult and it's not gonna look that good because the upper pipe is almost invisible. So I experimented a bit and 150 seems to be a good value, but uh, this is gonna be, be a decision that you need to take for your game. And likewise for the bottom one, 550 is gonna be the maximum position uh, maximum amount that we can move our obstacle downwards. Great, so let's delete this obstacle and go back to our obstacle spawner scene. This method is gonna spawn an obstacle and randomly place it on a location that we defined the limits of and the timer is gonna fire off every second and a half the timeout signal and this method will be called. We are almost done, so let's create a couple of utility functions that we're gonna use to call the timer from outside this scene. And these functions will start or stop the timer. That's it. Okay, everything is looking good, so let's get back to our world scene and let's instance the obstacle spawner. We want this to be, if by default it's on zero, zero, but if it's here, it's gonna start spawning the pipes here and you're never gonna see them. So let's move this to the right. And I'm just gonna say that it should be at 800. 
let's run the game. And if we did everything right, we should get pipe spawning at different locations every second and a half. But as you can see, we can not see the pipes over the ground. We don't want that. So let's take the obstacle spawner and let's move it behind the ground. Let's also take the player and move it to the front. In Godot, the things in the scene tree that are downwards, like in the bottom, will be displayed above other things. So we'll display the pipes, then the ground, then the player. Great, let's run it. And awesome. You are getting randomly placed pipes every second and a half. Great, you learned a lot in this tutorial and I hope it was useful. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.